A couple months ago, I decided it was time to build a little combat robot because I like destroying things. And for this, I knew I need wireless communication between the remote which would be in my hands and the receiver which would be in the robot. It also needed to be fast, easy to code, and able to work with something I already knew how to design. In other words, ESP32 only. Luckily for me though, the ESP Now protocol exists. And after seeing a bunch of documentation and videos online, which showed that all of the aforementioned criteria were met, I decided that it would be the perfect tool to ensue the damage I wanted to inflict. So today, I'll be showing you my custom ESP Now remote, since no one's ever built that before, and the interface I created for it using this 0.85 inch IPS TFT LCD making it objectively better than any commercial solution. I'll walk you through the PCB design, coding, and tuning of the controls. So enough playing around, let's get started. This video was sponsored by PCBWay. Head over to PCBWay.com for high quality PCBs, 3D printing, CNC machining, and much more. Make sure to use my link to sign up so that you can get $5 off your first order and I can get discount coupons. So the first thing I thought about when designing this remote was which board I was going to use for the microcontroller. And although I could go with a good old do it dev kit and a separate display, I instead chose something that had both in the same package, the LilyGo TQT Pro which as you saw at the start of the video has this little display in the front and an ESP32 S3 on the back, a high performance wireless microcontroller. It's really, really small at 18 by 33 millimeters. So I easily fit it into the middle of the remote board and thought I could get away with wiring the joysticks and buttons straight to it and be done. But of course, that was not the case. You see, I was trying to use these spare PS4 joysticks I bought off AliExpress, which are remarkably good by the way, and if you don't know how these things work, they're built with two potentiometers connected perpendicular to each other, so that this one measures the x-axis and this one measures the y-axis, and also a push button in the z-axis for some reason. If you don't already know how potentiometers work, the door is right there, just kidding. But in simple terms, they output a voltage proportional to the position of the slider. So for a joystick with two potentiometers, we need to measure two voltages. With two joysticks, we'll need to measure four voltages, and oh look at that, I can't even measure any of them with the TQT Pro because none of the ADC1 pins are broken out. So I went ahead and picked up one of these ADS1115 I2C ADCs from Adafruit, which gives me the four ADC channels I need to put both joysticks on the PCB. And then I put these right angle buttons, battery connectors, and a power switch on as well. Writing was really, really easy. I'll show you the schematic here, but it's also on my GitHub, and shout out to LittleScale for making and testing the footprint for these PS4 joysticks, which I'll also link in the description. The PCB shape was pretty much just so I could hold it and play with it in my hands nicely. And this resulted in an 145 by 100 millimeter board outline, which is pretty massive for a PCB, but of course, PCB way never fails to deliver with high quality, quickly manufactured circuit boards. I mean, this one arrived in 5 days with just standard build time selection. With the PCBs in hand now, I soldered everything up being sure to use the fat tip for better heat transfer. And after flashing the receiver off camera, it was time to plug in the transmitter for the first time and write some code for it, which used the following libraries for the display, Wi-Fi, and I2C analog readings. Okay, now let me take you through how the code works in steps. The part that probably most of you are here for is the actual ESP Now remote stuff, which I'll explain first. To begin coding with ESP Now, you need to include the ESP Now and Wi Fi libraries, and then store the MAC address of the peer device or devices. In this case, I also want to temporarily change the MAC address of the transmitter while running this program, so I store this variable. I'll explain how and why I'd want to do this later. Then, I make these two structures for sending and receiving data through ESP Now. 
The first one says that there are three integers in the data structure for the two drive motors and one servo motor. And the second one says that there is one integer in the data structure, which is for the battery readings. Here's a little ESP now initialization line that you need for some reason, and some instructions for the ESP32 when it sends data and receives data. When it sends data, these two lines tell it to print out whether the data was sent successfully or not. When it receives data, this line tells it to interpret as according to the battery check structure, which is one integer. These two lines tell it to print out how many bytes it received, and this line assigns the battery percentage reading to a global variable so that it can be used elsewhere. Now we're on to the setup, and we start with initializing the transmitter as a Wi-Fi station, and setting its MAC address to the new MAC address we want it to have. The reason I did this is so that when the transmitter board breaks, I can put in a new one, program it, and not worry about changing the peer MAC address on the receiver board. This initializes ESP now and tells you if it didn't work with this line registering the on data sent function we made above. These lines handle the pairing to the peer device and this line registers the on data receive function we made. Now in the main loop, here the data which is to be transmitted is set based on the values gathered from get readings. And then the data is sent with this line and checked if successful with this statement. Alright, now that we're done talking about the ESP Now stuff, I want to quickly go through the display interface, which uses the TFT ESPI library by Bodmer. At the very start, the program includes the TFT ESPI and SPI libraries, and creates an object within the TFT ESPI library. In setup, we initialize the TFT and set its rotation to zero so that it can display upside down like this. The screen is then filled with a black background so that we're free to display whatever we want, and in the main loop, the function update display is called every iteration. In that function, the display is reset to black and upside down rotation, the text is sized, and the first piece of text is printed. This tells us whether the macro is activated or not. And the macro that I signed was a full forward button, as you can see here. The text is a little smaller for the two battery percentages, at a size 2, and for both percentage readings, the text will be red if it's under 40%, and green if otherwise, so I can make sure the batteries don't over-discharge. For the remote battery reading, it's pretty simple, but for the receiver, I added a little more code to tell me when it's fully charged, and below 10% without messing up the text formatting. Both sections have a set cursor line to tell the TFT where to put the text, and then print the text in that location. You might have also seen the Haas Industries logo in the middle of the screen, and this works by printing an XBM file which I made by converting a PNG in GIMP. In hindsight, I probably could have just printed shapes here to be faster. I mean, it is just three rectangles including a square, and then two circles on either side, but where's the fun in that? The last piece of information I print on the screen is the speed mode, but this is useless since I switched to steer and drive mode for the joysticks instead of tank steering as most do. I still kept it in though in case I changed my mind, and definitely not because I'm lazy at all. You can check the rest of the code on my GitHub, and also big thanks to Random Nerd Tutorials aka Rui Santos for this amazing article on ESP Now Communication which I learned this stuff from. Alright guys, that's all from me today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and comment down below because it really helps support the channel. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell because I've got some really awesome projects coming up which I'm sure you'll not want to miss. Bye!